So we have to become attracted to Krishna. And that, attract, we can, that attraction will come by hearing about him. Hearing about his Nam, Rukun, and Lila. Chanting his name, hearing about him. Hearing about his Mahima and glories. As we become more and more attracted, then we become more and more attached. Attachment grows by association. The, long, the more you associate with someone, the more you become attached. When you first got married, you weren't that attached to your husband. But now it's impossible to get detached. <laughs> You're cemented together like Araldite. Araldite. Hmm. You're stuck on each other. At least, hopefully. <laughs> so Krishna is like that. You have to... That's like guru or anything. If you associate, the more you associate with someone, if, it's, if, there's some attra- if there's some attraction, which means liking, it's called rag, rag and dvesh. If there's some rag, some attraction, some liking... And you continue to associate with that object of liking your rock, then you become becomes rati, becomes asakti, becomes attachment. So if you like the guru, you have some rock for the guru, and then you associate more and more, then you become attached, <laughs> right? <laughs> and that's that's the same. But with guru, you can see and interact, and seems more tangible. So that's guru takes takes the principle of attraction and attachment. And he, and he dovetails it. He, he folds the dovetail and he folds it up. He takes the principle of attraction and attachment and he redirects your material, the principle of material attraction and material attachment. He directs it. First you become attracted and attached to Guru. Then, then he deflects that and brings your attraction and attachment to Krishna. Because through, he's transparent. He's a transparent medium. So he, because Krishna comes as Guru, what to to what to attract you by the sound vibration, not the physical attraction. Gurus may be ugly, or fat, thin, tall, anything, but by the sound vibration, he attracts the consciousness, he attracts the heart, and then then you serve his vapu, the Guru's vapu, and you serve his words. That increase, and then that means you're associating when you associate with the Guru's words and the Guru's body. Then you then you develop your Attachment. Then that attachment come, goes to Krishna because attachment, attraction to Guru and attachment to Guru are this become they actually transform into attraction and attachment to Krishna. They're actually not different. If the Guru is Guru, if he's transparent, if he collects, if he collects the attraction and attachment and keeps it for himself, or he gloats over it, or he relishes it, or he enjoys it. The, the audience or the, the popularity, then, then he becomes a block. Then he, he doesn't help anyone. No one gets helped. And, they, and, they're, and by associating with such a guru, one's attraction and attachment for Krishna does not develop, does not arise, does not increase.
This is a very appealing prospect. That God is a person and I'm a person. We have personal relationship and personal dealings. And there's no no cheating there and no exploitation there. It's, it's very attractive. You read Krishna book. I remember I read the Krishna book first time in 1974. And I thought, this is, what a world this place is, Vrindavan. And because I was more attracted to the, this side of things. I read about Mathura and Dwarka Leela in the same book. I had seen all the big palaces and all the demons and fighting and this and that. And I didn't so much attracted to that. <laughs> But when I read about Krishna's Leela, the coward boys, and swimming in the Yamuna, and imitating the frogs, and dancing with the gopis, and, and the monkeys, and stealing yogurt, and all these cute, cute little antics, I was captivated. I really... So this is really... what Because I heard about heaven, and I heard about some idea about the spiritual world, and I grew up as a Catholic, Roman Catholic. And there's some, kind, some place called heaven, and God lives there, and and, and pe- good people can go there. <laughs> so I should be a good people. I'm not a bad people. But I didn't know much about the particulars of the place. I didn't know. It wasn't much product description there. And I didn't didn't have any. I thought, well, I didn't really tell me anything. Well, what do I, what do I do there? Even if I go there, I it's a very vague idea of what I would do there. I would float. I, I I had different ideas as I grew up. Sometimes I thought, well, I'll go there and I'll get everyone gets one cloud. Everyone gets one cloud, you know, Meg, and you lie in that cloud and you just float around. <laughs> you just float around in the spiritual world. <laughs> Sometimes you look up and you see God and whatever He looks like. I don't know, but then you just float around and it's like kind of like sleeping and feeling happy and sleeping and no cares. And that was one idea I had about heaven. <laughs> and now the other idea I thought is that is that when you go, if you go to heaven, you go to heaven, then they give you one harp. Harp is like a uh, oh, what do you call it? Like a vina or something like that. It's a musical instrument called a harp. It has strings on it. So they, when you get there, they give you one. When you go there, they give you one set of wings. When you get a set of wings and a spiritual body, a set of wings, and you get one harp, and you just fly around, ding, 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 ding. ding. <laughs> and the god is god is there. He's on a big chair. He's sitting on like a big throne or asan. And all the and everyone just flood, flies around and he goes ching ching ching, and he he's smiling and everyone's smiling and it's like a nice place. There's no disease and no death, no, no. So couldn't get a very clear idea from these uh, Christian holy books. <laughs> and I would ask different people. They they said no, you'll find that out when you get there. But I want to be there now. Be there now. So then we stumbled across the books of Prabhupada, Veda Vyasa, and Shukamuni, and we discovered so much description. The third canto of Bhagavatam, so much minute description about Vaikuntha and Vaikuntha Vasis and what they do and what their vimans are. There's families there, husbands and wives are there. Everything's there, and so many descriptions. It's quite astounding. You could never imagine. Then, as we go further and further, we find out: Oh, everyone, get your own spiritual body ready there, ready, ready and waiting. Everyone has a spiritual body ready and waiting. It's like someone you get a letter in the car and said, you get a letter in the mail and says, "Listen, come to the to the Honda, come to the." Let's say Porsche dealership, wherever that is, if there is one. But the port, the port where they're selling Porsche cars, showroom. Porsche showroom. There is a uh, in America they say dealership, and they also have a showroom at the dealership. But anyway, you come to the, come to the Porsche showroom, and uh, and there's one shiny brand new Porsche waiting for you. 
and the keys are here, and you come and you, you drive it out. He said, wow, I got this letter. $250,000 car is waiting for me. Okay, let's get over there. I say, hey, look, I'm, I'm Mr. Patela. I got this letter that says, I, where's my car? Oh, let's see, see that blue one over there? Oh, yeah. That's yours. Here's the keys. Oh. <laughs> so it's like that. Every, every soul has a spiritual body waiting for them. As a gopa, as a gopi. It's already there. It's already... It's, you don't have to make it. You don't have to build it. You don't have to paint it. You don't have to decorate it. Everything all ready to go. Like the car is ready to go. When you buy a car, you don't have to put seats in it. You have to paint it. You have to put seats in it. You have to put transmission in it. You have to put a trunk, a carpet, anything. Armrest. Good car, everything's there. You don't have to add anything. No options required. It's got everything. It's got all the options. Power this, power, power everything. And... And stereo and everything. When you buy a $250,000 car, that's, you got everything. That is, there's no, th- th- those cars don't have options. <laughs> that's, that's everything. <laughs> that's the whole chopping boat. <laughs> all, all you need to do is drive. So the spiritual body is there. You don't have to have any option, options. No options. It's all ready. We just, we have to connect with that. Krishna connection. It's only a matter of stretching our consciousness. Conscious connection. We have to stretch our consciousness from here to there. We have to touch Krishna. We have to touch Krishna with our consciousness. And that's, that's what chanting is all about. Chanting Krishna's holy name means touching Krishna. First you touch Krishna's name. Then you touch Krishna's fame. Right? Nam Gun. Nam Rup Gun Lila. You touch his form in terms of his his qualities and his Leelas. You contact them, you touch them, and then when you realize your spiritual body then you can actually embrace Krishna's form. Touch Krishna's form directly. Now it's an indirect form, indirectly touching by contacting. A touch generally means skin to skin or body to body, that's touching. But contacting also is there. So we touch the name and touch the qualities, touch the lila, and then finally we'll connect with the form. But the form also manifests in a sequence. Nam reveals its form and the form and its qualities and pastimes. So they come. If Nam reveals Krishna's form, then you have qualities and pastimes. They come together. That's fast. It's slow. Going from Nam to Rup is slow. When you have Rup, then you have Guna and Lila. If you have my form, then if, you, if I'm in your house and you have my form, then I'll be doing something. Right? I'll be active. So that's Lila. And I'll, when I'm active, I'll, distrib- I'll show my qualities. Yeah. So then you have guna, guna and lila. So what the big the big distance is is touching nam and then touching touching rup. That's we may first you have to realize that Krishna's name is Krishna. That's a, it may take a while, a long distance. And then then that then that realization is there. Then when Krishna's pleased, he'll reveal his form and name. And some taste is there. Form has something that has form <clears throat> may have taste or may not have taste. A floor has this marble has form, but it doesn't have taste. There's no rust. With no rust, it is no taste. But Krishna's form, he's rasaraj. Krishna's form is full of rust. So when you contact Krishna's form, then you get taste. Right? They're chanting the holy name, and the holy name reveals Krishna's form. And when you're contacting Krishna's form and the holy name, then you're taste tasting. Nam ras. So the form of Krishna is full of taste. And that taste is very satisfying. And that's what, and the devotees, when they taste that 
the form of Krishna's name, then they want to keep tasting more and more. And everything else becomes de- detasteful. <laughs> everything else becomes de- detasteful. You got that? Detasteful or detestful? Detestful. Detasteful means we don't want to test it. Detestful means we don't want to test it and we don't want to taste it. Materialistic people, materialistic activities, materialistic music, materialistic books, TV, radio. And everyone thinks we have gone crazy. (laughs) And that's great. Let them think that way. Let let them label us that way. Because if they think that way and they label us that way, then what will they do? They will avoid us. Because you are crazy. (laughs) And if I associate with you, I may become crazy too. (laughs) So, watch out. (laughs) So this is a blessing of Krishna, that all our friends don't call us anymore. (laughs) And this is a blessing of Krishna, that that our relatives are saying, you're crazy. What happened to you? (laughs) And then they all withdraw from the environment. Where are all my friends? No one's calling me. Even my mother doesn't call me as she used to. My daughter's gone a little crazy. I'm going to call my other daughter. (laughs) She's normal. (laughs) 